Hi, I'm Dan Bukatinsky from Who Do You Think You Are? And you're listening to Lisa Louise Cook on the Genealogy Gems podcast. Welcome to the Genealogy Gems podcast. It's a show filled with family history research strategies and techniques, news and entertainment, and inspiration. And I'm your host, Lisa Louise Cook. Well, as you could tell by the gentleman who introduced this particular episode, this is a very special episode of the Genealogy Gems Premium Podcast. Dan Bukatinsky is here. He is the executive producer of Who Do You Think You Are? The U.S. version of a very popular television series. He's here to talk about the premiere of the fifth season. The series now appears on the TLC network. And I just had an opportunity to pre-screen the premiere episode with Cynthia Nixon, and it's wonderful. So I'm really looking forward to talking to Dan. And I think he's got some special news about um, the future of Who Do You Think You Are as well. And this is also a special episode because this interview was so much fun, and he's always a joy to talk to. And I just thought, let's just throw the doors open and make this podcast episode available to everyone. So welcome to all of you. Even if you're not a Genealogy Gems Premium member, you are joining us for this very special premium podcast episode. And I hope you take a moment to uh, check out the show notes for this episode because I've got some links where you can learn more about what you get as a Genealogy Gems Premium member, including, gosh, over a hundred of these exclusive podcast episodes that are just available for premium members, as well as over about two dozen so far of my my uh, classes that are available on video, complete classes on some of the hottest topics, uh, particularly in the areas of technology and genealogy. And both on the audio and the video side, we add new content every month. So it's a wonderful time to become a Genealogy Gems Premium member. And when you do, we still have our very special ebook. It's a free ebook that you get as a bonus when you sign up for a one year membership, which is just $29.95 for the whole year. It gives you complete access to the entire entire archive of all of those podcast episodes and video classes, and you get the great ebook from Family Tree Magazine uh, that's on the 84 best tips and tricks that I've written about for uh, the magazine over the years. So lots of goodies there. You can find out more about it at genealogygems.com. And without further ado, let's jump into our conversation with Dan Bukatinsky of Who Do You Think You Are? Who Do You Think You Are has become a worldwide television phenomenon, starting in the UK, and it's making its way around the world, telling the stories of well-known celebrities in search of their family history. Well, July 23rd, 2014 marks the debut of season five of the series here in the US, and the show's executive producer, Dan Bukatinsky, is here to tell us more about it. Hi, Dan. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh, we're thrilled to have you here on the show. We're excited about the new season. Uh, it was such a thrill, you know, when, when the show left NBC, we all got a little nervous. Yeah. And then to see TLC pick it up yeah. was wonderful. <laughs> were you happy? <laughs> yeah. We were nervous too. Lisa uh, Kudrow, my partner and I, uh, were, are so passionate about the show, and we were when we first saw the show in the UK, and really wanted to be involved in put, bringing it to uh, the United States. And, and Lisa was, as people who are fans of the show know, was the first the first one we ever, ever filmed here in the States for the American version of the show. And uh, it was a real experiment for NBC. Uh, I, give, I gave them full credit because they really made the show as, you know, we got to, we got to maintain the integrity of the original format, which is something that we've, we loved and we were, we were worried about. You know, we were worried about bringing it to American television and whether broadcasters here would want there to be a host, competition, eating of worms, you know, <laughs> you wind up marrying a total stranger at the end of it, you know, things yeah, like that, yeah. which are, are perfectly fine maybe for other shows. We really wanted to maintain the integrity of what we loved about the documentary series, Who Do You Think You Are, in, in, in uh, other places. And as it turns out, um, NBC was a really great partner in terms of helping us develop 
and build an audience for the show. In our last season on NBC, we received an Emmy nomination, but unfortunately yes. it was the end of the run on NBC. And then we were fortunate enough to get the excitement of TLC for season four, which did really, really well. We just found out we were nominated for another Emmy for season I know. four. Congratulations. And now we're a week away from premiering um, again, our fifth season on TLC. And, and we're very excited because I feel like the audiences who have loved the show since season one have followed us and are continuing to grow and watch us wherever we're going to be on. Absolutely. And, you know, you mentioned, and, and Lisa was here on the podcast, and she told us the story about being over in the UK and uh, flipping the dial and, and coming across the show. Um, I'm assuming you were not there. Did she come back to you? She did. Come back home and say, so what did you think? She did. She, she did. Back, she came back. I saw the show. She found the show and she came. And I think, I can't remember whether they were playing on BBC America or not, but somehow yeah. or other, I, she, or she got DVDs through, through our agent. And, and, um, we, I started watching them here, a couple of them, and I didn't even know who the local UK celebrities were that they were profiling, right. which is just, it's just a testament to that ultimately this isn't really about the lives of the celebrities. It's actually about, the show is about, you know, the protagonist is always some person in history who happens mm -hmm. to be in the past of, you know, that is somewhere in the lineage of our celebrity who brings us to on that journey, but really isn't about them. And, and, and the, the stories stand on their own. Um, but I fell in love with the show and we got on the phone with the show's creator, Alex Graham in the UK. And we mm -hmm. told him how passionate we were about his work. We found out that he was also the creator of, um, of Manor House and other shows like that that we were huge fans of. So we were very excited. <laughs> and, um, and pretty soon we were meeting with him and, and, and strategizing about how to do the show here. And, uh, you know, NBC came in and and um, and came on board, and we started to really. We had a couple. We had about a year and a half to develop the series, figure out how it would be different from the UK version, how we would build commercials into it and act breaks, and also how we would maintain uh, the integrity of it. But I I, I fell in love with it also, and. You know, I wasn't as much of a history buff um, growing up as Lisa was, mm -hmm. but watching the show and personalizing and contextualizing these tent poles in history is one of the things I've, I've come to love about the show. It teaches yeah. history both to young and old. It's become a real family show because you're not only talking about the, you know, families and recent in recent history, but you're also going back in time and tying yourself to and learning about how different celebrities are tied to some of the major events in both American and world history. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's funny that you mentioned Manor House. Uh, it's a small world, Dan. My family and I starred in Texas Ranch House. It was the last of the series done by Wall to Wall. Oh, you're kidding. No. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. That's awesome. Well, yes. I, that experiment, you know, the, Alex's whole, the whole way in which his brain works and, and how he comes up with these sort of social experiments in his head, you know, yeah. the game of, I'm, I'm mostly a writer and an actor, so I've, I've spent my entire career playing the what if game, you know, what if, but what mm -hmm. Alex does also is, you know, what if, what if we took a, a celebrity on a journey to discover their past and they became, a, who do you think you are? And what if we did a social experiment and had people live in the manner that they did hundreds of years ago? And all of these things have turned into quite provocative and riveting television, including that. Well, and it was provocative to be on the participant I'm sure. side. I can't even imagine. We, <laughs> we were living in 1867 uh, <laughs> on a Texas ranch with longhorn cattle. You know, it was just, it was <laughs> no Wi-Fi there, huh? Oh, exactly. Oh my gosh. Talk about detox. Yeah. Well, and, and it's interesting because this whole genre, whether we're talking about Who Do You Think You Are or the House series, that type of thing, call them reality TV. You call them docu-series. I think that's true. And this whole genre, though, is out of the normal scope of what I've noticed in your bio, which is, of course, you're an actor, yeah. you're a writer, you're a producer. D did you have any um, hesitations about going into this genre? Um, I, I, let me put it this way. I, I, having watched the show, I had no hesitations about wanting to try to bring the series to America. Yeah. Uh, when Lisa and I first talked about it, we thought, well, we have to do this on History Channel or we have to do it on PBS because yeah. there can't be commercials. And, we, you know, the notion of being on a major network within the department of that network that's called reality television or well, actually they call it unscripted. <laughs> Right, um, right. Which I think is more accurate because it's mm -hmm. so there's such a vast 
disparity between one kind of show and another. Um, but yeah, it was very nerve wracking because it's not something that Lisa and I have been partners now for 12 years and we set out to make, to make television and films and projects that we care about and love. And this is certainly one of them, but it wasn't right. certainly a mandate for us to necessarily get into the reality world. It's just, we, we weren't opposed to it as long as it was mm -hmm. a, a subject matter we found uh, compelling. But um, yeah, once you're sort of stuck in the reality genre here, it is nerve wracking. You get certainly when Emmy time comes, you're being compared to shows that really are apples and oranges, you know. Yes. Um, they're great shows, but Shark Tank and Undercover Boss and um, um, what's the the one with the – oh, God, I can't remember the one that's the fish. The one I'm hooked on is called The Profit, where the guy goes and, and renovates basically uh, entrepreneurial businesses. Yeah, you know? I mean, yeah. It's that, that whole – yeah. 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 I mean, but but nowadays there's like such a wide disparity between, you know, from one show to another, from yeah. The Bachelor to American Masters. I mean, the, the world of unscripted is so vast. You're not doing Honey Boo Boo, is what you're saying. We're not doing Honey Boo Boo. And 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 again, when TLC showed, you know, expressed to us their interest in doing Who Do You Think You Are, we had yeah. some of the same trepidations we had when NBC. Um, expressed an interest. We're like, will we be able to maintain the integrity of our original production? In what ways do you want, do you see this as being a good fit for your network? Um, we were nervous about it. And, and as it turns out, they love the show for the same reasons we love the show. And they've been amazing supporters. We've been able to maintain the integrity of how we make the show, which is not easy. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. It is mm -hmm. among the most complicated shows to produce because it's a Rubik's Cube of so many factors that are hard to control. Yeah. And, you know, controlling the schedule of a celebrity is one thing, controlling how easily or quickly uh, documents are discovered in a person's past are, is a very subjective thing. You know, you either will find mm -hmm. something or you won't. So it's like archaeologists. You can dig and dig and dig and dig and you'll either find an artifact or you won't. And uh, this show relies on the, um, the willingness of a participant and mm -hmm. luck and the absolute yeah. um, skill of our researchers, which has been paramount. Yes, we've had um, Allie Orton here on the oh, show. I She's love Allie. fabulous and, um, you know, has a genealogist's heart. So we all have really uh, picked up some great tips from her on how they, they go about and do this research. Yeah. I had the fortunate um, opportunity to watch Cynthia Nixon's episode mm -hmm. last night, which, of course, is going to be premiere. And I promise I won't reveal any of the uh, twists and turns because there are a lot. Sure, sure. Um, but I think, and I mean, I've watched all five seasons. And I think part of it is due to her. She's just a very clear, articulate woman, easy to follow. Yes. And she had a wonderful way of um, kind of summarizing what she was experiencing. I agree, yeah. But I think that episode really um, was probably the finest that I've seen so far Thank in you. terms of telling the story of the research. And you guys really did just stick to one story versus jumping all over a tree, which I think is just mind blowing for people, particularly who don't do genealogy. Right. But you also um, really taught, I thought, at the same time as keeping a story completely riveting, you were really showing the research process. And what's the question you would ask next? And then how do you figure out where you go? Mm -hmm. Which I think is just going to resonate, I know, with my audience because they, they have such a passion for the work that goes into all this. That's right. The hunt is part, is part of it. And, the, and this is such a process type show. I mean, it really, you know, a lot of what we love about it is that it, it is, it takes, you know, it's not just about taking somebody on a journey. It's about uncovering and leading one person to a clue like a scavenger okay. hunt to uh -huh. another clue, which leads to this question, which hopefully gets answered, you know, and sometimes the questions can't be answered and sometimes they can, you know, the fact that this show is a Rubik's Cube is an understatement. I mean, the, <laughs> the fact with Cynthia Nixon's story is that in this particular case, there was enough evidence, there was enough documents, there was enough of a story with pieces of a puzzle that unraveled yeah. that, were, that sustained an hour. We had a subject like Cynthia, who is incredibly thoughtful, incredibly smart, emotional, inquisitive, and passionate right. as she went through it. These are things that you can't always control. But if you take a story that is as emotional and, you know, she's a woman who, you know, not ironically, but, but certainly fortuitously, she is somebody who has often been at the forefront of fights for women's rights 
and um, wound up in her story that will that you'll see on the premiere of Who Do You Think You Are um, is a story about a woman several generations back and the adversity she went through and how she mm-hmm. got through it and what she suffered and what that means about the particular period in time that she lived and how far we've come as a result of it. Um, that is an unbelievably lucky way of being able to contextualize a story. Now, the truth is, the two, the two pieces of that puzzle that we couldn't have controlled was that, A, how engaged was Cynthia Nixon going to be? We didn't know until we got going. And yeah. B, we wound up uncovering a story that was able to sustain one full hour and was right. as dense and provocative and emotional as her story is. We have other stories where just naturally we're able to tell one half of, let's say, one, one branch of a family tree just to a point where there's a nice reveal. And mm-hmm. then naturally we found something exciting on the other branch of the tree that we're dying to tell. And is we can and we can pack into another half of an episode. So right. who do you think you are? Episodes have sort of fallen into different categories. Some of them are go back many many generations and tell one story over the course of an hour. Another one we have this season goes down two branches of the family and and very very different in each direction, <laughs> uh, just like Brooke Shields has did in season one. You know. Yeah. Um, and then we have others where you are going down the same branch of the family, but it's taking you around different turns. And, you know, it just depends. It just depends on the research and it depends on the subject. Well, and it was interesting in watching um, the version that I had, it actually included basically what we would think of as outtakes. You call them snaps. Wow. And um, it was really interesting to me as a, as a researcher, and I would love to see those bits be included on the website. Yeah. Um, I, I, because, do, I do believe that's the plan. TLC plans oh, on wonderful. on using the scenes that we can't. And, and by the way, we you know it, it, it depends on the subject, but we have mm-hmm. had as much as double the amount of material <laughs> that we're able to air. In well, some it. of the stuff that got left out yeah. was jaw dropping. Yeah. I mean, truly, you were like, "Oh my word, you're kidding!" This is what the. Yeah. But you guys, I thought, really made the right choices because you stuck with the woman who you were telling her story. Yes. It was so tempting to go down her husband's, you know rabbit hole, of but course. you didn't. No, and, 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 and there are times that we did actually in the field, we did shoot a, really? additional pieces of, 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 you know, we've, we've gone down some, in, in one season, I remember, we, we had like 90 minutes of material. We had an entire other okay. story for a character, for, for a subject. And we just ultimately in the editing room didn't have the time and, and wind up lo- losing huge chunks of what were shot. So we're hoping to be able to use that stuff um, on the site and as supplemental um, material. And, um, but, yeah, with Cynthia, it, it, we're, we're really proud of that episode. It was the first one we shot this season. It's the first one mm-hmm. we finished. Um, we've had a scheduling. It's been really challenging to sort of get the actors, certainly television actors that are on the regular TV seasons. You know, oh, they're right. working straight through from August to May. So getting them <laughs> to have <laughs> the days that we need to shoot an episode has always been a challenge. But we're going to do it this season. We're, we're doing um, six in a row, and then we're doing eight more after the new year. And they'll be oh, that's great to hear. Great. Yeah, they'll be, Fantastic. They'll be 14 total, so we're excited. Well, you know, it's interesting because when, when you watch that episode, and I, and I hope that everybody listening gets a friend or a relative who is not a family historian to sit down and watch it. Because if you were going to watch any episode, this is the one, because I think they can follow it really easy from a research standpoint, let alone the story. To inspire them but, to do it. Exactly, yeah. you exactly. Know what, you know what else I love about this story that, that makes me really think and makes so many people think? The, the first person accounts, you know, the yes. books that have been written that may not mention your relative, but mention a place your relative was at a time that mm-hmm. your relative was there, or makes reference to your relative uh, or your ancestor without even naming names, but you realize it's them. I mean, there are things out there. That's what freaks. That's what's so amazing about genealogy. There are yeah. things out there that exist that have your ancestors' handwriting on it, and we just you just have to find them. And it's the hunt for them in different countries or in different archives or on different websites that makes it feel like this exciting treasure hunt. This is exactly how I would describe it. Now, I'm curious because Bukatinsky is a fairly unique name. It's yeah. not one we come across every day in the U.S. It's Russian. 
It's, I thought so, because I saw some, I did a little bit of looking around last night at some, uh, doing some searches on your name. Have you done much research or has Ancestry done it for you? I haven't, believe it or not. I mean, we've been doing the show really? now for five seasons and I have, I've just this year done the DNA test and found out I'm, I'm no surprise, very much, uh, almost, you know, almost exclusively Eastern European. Um, yeah. I knew that my mother's side of the family, uh, came from Poland and I knew uh-huh. that my father's side of the family came from Russia. Um, I haven't actually <laughs> exploited the possibility of digging. Um, Lisa keeps telling me <laughs> not to do it because maybe I'll do an episode of the show. Um, yeah. I was watching to see how far down the road I, I, I wound up on the show Scandal to find out. Um, you know, as as the seasons continued on Scandal, I, I got closer and closer to wanting to pitch myself as a possible <laughs> subject for who do you think you are. But uh, but regardless, I'm very eager to – you know, both my mother and my father – uh, have Eastern European ancestors only a generation away, but I mean, my grandparents, they both were born in South America. So I have Argentinian one generation uh, yes. in Argentina, but really before Argentina, it's all in Eastern Europe. And I'd be very curious to follow certainly the Bukatinsky line, but also on my mom's side. Okay. Well, I can't stand it because I'm going to send you some immigration records from South America. I wondered if there was a, if I had the right guys oh, yeah. and, and there's, there's a whole family, women and men, and these documents have their photographs. Oh, and wow. I tell you, Dan, one of them, he looks like you. Oh my God. You're kidding. He has the same nose, the same eyes. And I'm looking at going, I bet you I it's my grandfather. Yeah. <laughs> it's I bet just my dad, amazing. My dad's like father immigrated from Russia in the thirties. Yeah. And I, you know, I never met him or maybe mm-hmm. even my great grandfather. Um, um, I can't remember if they were born there. It was, I think it was only one generation in Argentina, but, but that's amazing. That's amazing. I, I have to do some digging, but I, 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 it makes me nervous. Well, oh, you'll have a, I'd love to see it in an episode because well, they were such world travelers at a time when we don't think of people as just jumping from one continent to the oh, next. Oh, absolutely. In it fact, wasn't that easy. My grandmother on my mom's side was on the last boat out of Poland before the rest oh. of her family. She had six other brothers and sisters were all decimated by the Holocaust. And she, man, she managed to make it to Uruguay in 1938, I think. Um, mm-hmm. But had she waited you know, a week, she would never have made it. And, and things like that are another reason I love Who Do You Think You Are. You realize not only on what shoulders of giants we stand, but also by just happenstance in many cases that we are even here. Mm-hmm. Um, those, it's almost so every story, and certainly the stories that involve wars and that involve, uh, you know, holocausts or, or other um, adverse historical um, periods in time, we realize how close generations ago were to being decimated and, and how close we would be to not being here. So it's very, uh, it's very inspiring. And certainly Cynthia even ran up against that in her episode. Of course, of course. Realizing one choice by one person yeah, made all the difference. Absolutely. And, and that can still happen today, isn't that yeah, true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I keep saying we're living, I'm always saying this, I want to put it on a shirt. We are living the history of tomorrow every single day. So it's like you want to, yes. it, it not only wants to, it inspires you to want to make history every day, but we are whether we like it or not, even if we're not trying to. I mean, whatever things we sign today could potentially be artifacts that are being dug up 100 years from now and what we and what we tell to our family is the oral history that will be repeated down the line whether it's accurate or not only time will tell but um you know those people living back then were just living their lives day to day and didn't realize that we would be searching and 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 learning about them hundreds of years later it it does feel to me like a it's like a restoration. You get a chance to restore them back to memory, yes. to all of our memories. And and sometimes when my kids look at me and go, "Why again are you doing this?" I'm like, "I don't want to be forgotten." Yeah, yeah. I know I don't. So I'm pretty sure they don't I, either. I have to say, almost every one of our every one of the actors and and athletes and musicians and the celebrities that do our show, all of them start to feel a connection to a character that they never even knew. And they yeah. feel this tie to them. It really brings history tighter and closer and closer. You know, people say that, you know, it's a small world and the world is vast. But when you travel it, you start to realize how small it actually is. 
But yeah. the history is also not as vast as we think it is. I mean, you go back a couple of hundred years, it feels like a huge amount of time. But when you learn about who married who and who had which children and what, who worked in what house and what those houses looked like, and, and if you're lucky enough to go to the house, if it still stands, you start to feel as though you're revisiting them and um, you, you connect to them. Mm-hmm. I'm curious. I know as an executive producer, you're involved at kind of the higher level. You're not personally doing research, that type of thing, but you're making some global decisions about, excuse me, about the show. And I know that you have to work within the the um, the channel, you know, the TLC or NBC, whoever you're working mm-hmm. with. If, if there was one thing that you could do and nobody had any restraints on you for doing this, what would you love to do at least once in this show? On the show? Yeah, like whether it's the way you tell the story or that you could have a three-hour marathon episode, yeah. you know, what would be your... Boy, your that's, that's, those are, there's a couple of things. I think one thing I would love to do is be able to have no time restriction because some of these stories we have to squeeze into 42 minutes and yeah. I wish we didn't have to... I, you know, one day I, I dream of being able to do a whole episode without any commercial interruption so that oh, maybe somebody yeah. would become a sponsor for the full hour and would be able to do the full hour without stopping. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd love to maybe not necessarily do somebody as well known. You know, we get that request every year and it's kind right. of obvious the show, you know, your way in to your interest in the show is directly tied to your interest in the celebrity who is going on the journey Mm-hmm. We always say that the star of each episode is not actually the star of, that you're seeing. It's actually the star. It's, the, <laughs> it's actually the person in history that we're going to be focusing on. Right. But the truth is, the interest in the series is in in large part, if not completely, in uh, based on the excitement people have about seeing the, these celebrities in a way that you've never seen them before. Actually, you know, uncensored, unscripted, and really emotionally available. And I, that's what I love about the show. But there are times when I'd love to, you know, tell an amazing story in history. And maybe it, it not, it, maybe it ties to somebody that we're also getting to meet for the first time or tell a story that goes on for a really long time. I'd also love to take an entire family. You know, it would be great to tell. Oh yeah, We talk about that a lot, which is, and this season we're doing it for the very, very first time. Rachel McAdams and her sister, Kayleen, take the journey together. And it was really fun to watch the two of them go on the journey, experience it, um, react to each thing together as sisters, react off of each other and use each other for support. It's something that, you know, I I wouldn't be opposed to doing again, a father, daughter, brother, sister, you know. You know, it's funny, I was going to bring that particular episode up because I think that people are going to love seeing that. And yeah. it also makes it so that they're not always having to turn to the camera or, or off, you know, to the side of the camera and talk, yeah. but can, like you say, bounce off of each other. And yeah. um, I think that would be awesome to have more family members. Uh, ha- have you had any celebrities who've asked you, oh, can I have mom come along? Or- uh, well, we've had celebrities who have wanted to make the journey with a family member, but the family member stays back, isn't right. on camera with them and, and doesn't necessarily go. You really want them to experience the, the, the revelation of the document without yeah. without necessarily you never know what a family dynamic is like sometimes you're going to temper <laughs> your reaction to either protect a family member or to you know it just changes the chemistry so for us you know it was a real experiment to have a person be there with someone else because you really want that person to be reacting not to the family member necessarily but to us and make us be the other subject in that you know, we as an audience become the other subject in that journey. Um, yeah. But so it was an experiment. But but people have traveled, have taken the journey with family members. And, um, mm-hmm. and you know, we've often had people ask whether they can go on the journey with a family member. Sometimes, I don't remember whether anyone's asked if they can do it actually on camera with their, with their relative or not. But I, it's certainly something that we would be open to because the Rachel and Kayleen episode was certainly a, a, a good one. And... And we've certainly introduced the parent of a lot of our celebrities yes. in the opening and closings of our episodes, which is some of my favorite moments, which is when a person... Those are a real treat. A real take, yeah. you know, take the story of what you just learned back to someone else in your family and, and someone who's one generation closer to the person you just learned about. So it's kind of oh, yeah. fun. 
Well, before I let you go, I have to ask, you, you know, I'm assuming you're, uh, I don't know how how many you have already in the can of the first six, but do you have a favorite among them of the new episodes oh coming up? Oh my gosh. I, I love them all for different reasons. And some of them I haven't <laughs> even seen yet. So I can't really say. Can you really pick say. your favorite child? <laughs> I, I can't say because I haven't seen them all yet. So I, could, yeah. I couldn't. I know um, Valerie Bertinelli goes on in a really, really exciting journey and she, hers, um, you know, she connects with her Italian heritage and, and as well as a lineage that she could never have imagined, which is great. Um, uh, Kelsey Grammer has one that is incredibly impactful and resonates with his own life, but goes back far as well. Um, Rachel and Kayleen is exciting. And it's so different just because the two of them are sisters. And I love Jesse Tyler Ferguson's as well. He, you know, we meet him with his dad in the opening and, and then he, he reveals a, a hidden legacy of on his father's side, which is really exciting. But, but I, I'm a, I'm, so I'm a fan of all of them. I haven't seen Valerie's or, or, or Kelsey's yet, so I can't say if either one of those are my favorite. As of right now, I love all of them, and, and certainly we've chosen the right premiere. See, Cynthia Nixon's is so compelling, as you found it. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. certainly a, a, fa- a favorite of mine from all seasons, and it's a, the perfect way to, to kick off um, our, our season uh, next week. Well, and you had a wonderful job. You know, if you have to put commercials in there to have the kind of cliffhangers you had, yeah, we <laughs> that's have the to. way to do it. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Well, that's wonderful. Well, here's an idea. Who knows? Maybe with the uh, you know World War One's anniversary is is basically occurring now, but for the U.S. it comes a little bit later. It'd be interesting to know if there was anybody with a World War One connection yeah. where you could have that um, honoring kind of the anniversary we're experiencing at the same time that they're. We can only it. hope. And by the way, that kind of thing would happen, and it would just be sheer luck because yeah. you know which celebrity wants to come on board, and actually we find documents for, and then for it to line up with something like that would be just um, serendipitous, you know. So I hope I hope that that happens. Well, it's been a joy to talk with you. I'm so glad we could squeeze this in. I'm actually about to head over to the beaches of Normandy, oh. where my great uncle uh, landed on the beach. Wow. And it's going to be amazing. Take a so, lot of pictures and keep, you know, because yeah. they you know, make new history. So that's great. Well, you know, everybody says, oh, I'm doing my own. Who do you think you are this week? Yeah. You know, yeah. the, and that's it's kind of like become the, the, uh, the verb, you know, <laughs> the term for the journey, which I think is great. It is. And of course, the series premieres July 23rd. 23rd. It's 9 p.m. on TLC. It's 8 p.m. Central. And Dan, thank you so much. We'll be tweeting. We'll be tweeting. So follow on Twitter at at Dan Bukatinsky. Um, You can also follow Who Do You Think You Are? Uh, it's at W D T Y and however way that (laughs) (laughs) who do you think you are all the initials. And it sounds like we should be heading to the website as well for some extras perhaps. Yeah. There's some great sneak peeks at all the episodes right now up on the website, as well as a great sneak peek at Cynthia Nixon's episode and, and past episodes. So that's on the TLC website. Great. And you'll have all the details and the links on the show notes for this episode. Dan, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for joining me for this Genealogy Gems premium podcast episode number 113. Uh, it sounds a little bit different because I'm actually on the road and on my way over to the UK to uh, speak on a Unlock the Past genealogy cruise. We're going to be doing that. And I am so looking forward to, as I mentioned to Dan in the interview, getting an opportunity to actually visit the beaches of Normandy. I hope to have a lot to tell you about that in some upcoming episodes. And we'll also be going to Dublin. And um, of course, the wonderful archives there. And uh, Eileen O'Doul will be there, a wonderful Irish genealogist. So, so much more to look forward to here on the Genealogy Gems podcast. If you have any questions or comments, you can email me at genealogygemspodcast at gmail.com. And of course, if you are not a premium member, I hope that you've enjoyed this episode and that you've uh, had a chance to check out all the great premium content that's available on the website, our complete list. And we hope that you'll join us here as a Genealogy Gems premium member. Thank you so much for listening, friend. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>